Okay, good afternoon, everyone, uh, or whenever it is that you're watching this. Uh, we're here for lecture 12 today. We're going to learn about fluids finally in motion, not fluid statics anymore. We're going to learn about the Bernoulli equation today. Um, so just really quick overview of what we're learning today. We're talking about streamlines. Um, we're deriving the Bernoulli equation, and then we're talking about sort of summing forces along a streamline and normal to a streamline. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to share my slides. Um, just a moment. Okay, and here we are looking at these same slides that we were just looking at. All right, so here we have uh, on the left a picture of an aircraft and you can see this red line slipping over the top of the cockpit um, and that's what we call a streamline and what is a streamline it's an imaginary construct but basically the mathematical definition is a streamline is a line where the velocity is everywhere tangential to that line so if you draw a streamline you trace it through the air the velocity goes in that direction right there are no off streamline components that's the definition of a streamline. Um, and along with the concept of a streamline, you need to have the concept of a fluid particle, which we've talked about for a while. It's an infinitesimally small collection of fluid molecules or atoms, but there are enough fluid molecules or atoms so that you can get statistics like density. Um, so here's our fluid particle here. It's got a bunch of forces acting on it. Um, and just talking about how streamlines um, appear in space, we can think of it in Cartesian space, like here up top on the right, with um, wherever the fluid particle is along the streamline, which is red here, wherever the fluid particle is, is marked here in black, and it has coordinates x, y, and z. Or if we look down on the bottom, we can think of it in cylindrical polar coordinates. So we've got our same streamline in red, and we've got that same particle position, but now its um, position is described in terms of R, Z, and theta instead. A uh, couple things about this way of thinking about fluids. Um, we describe a particle's motion in terms of its distance along a streamline. So the distance is described by S, and it's a function of time only. And then to describe the normal component, we talk about the local radius of curvature. Of the straight line. And we do a curly R for the radius of curvature, and that is a function of S. All right, so now um, we're going to take this concept of a streamline. Remember, it's a line through space where the fluid velocity is everywhere tangential to that line. There are no offline components. And we're going to apply Newton's second law to a fluid particle traveling along a streamline. We've got some assumptions here. Um, we're assuming now that the flow is two-dimensional in the plane. Uh, we have no viscous forces. 
the flow is steady, so no quantity is changing with time, and the flow is flowing, this fluid particle is traveling along a streamline. So we know um, Newton's second law, right? F equals ma, where F is the sum of the forces acting on the particle, m is the mass of the particle, and a is the vector acceleration of the particle. And the acceleration is a vector because it could have components in the x, y, or z directions if we're talking about Cartesian. So here, in this particular case, we're talking about the net pressure force on the particle. plus the net gravity force on the particle um, is equal to the particle mass times the particle's acceleration. Uh, and I'll add one more assumption. We have only pressure and gravity forces. Acting on the particle. Um, okay, so for two dimensional flow. we can describe the acceleration in terms of an on streamline and normal to the streamline components. So our total acceleration is the acceleration in the streamline direction plus the acceleration in the normal to the streamline direction. So if we look down at the figures on the bottom, Let's just talk about these for a moment. So we've got our X and Z axes. Those are the two Cartesian coordinates describing our two-dimensional space, right? We've got a two-dimensional flow. We've got some on the left here. We've got some sort of oval-looking body. And we've got a bunch of streamlines wrapping around the body. So we can see we've got some flow from left to right. I'll just write a capital U to... Um, describe the flow from left to right. And we've got a streamline in red here. And you can imagine identifying a point one further to the left along that streamline and then following that same streamline up and around the body and identifying a point two. We're gonna be doing that a lot with the Bernoulli equation. And then here's our little fluid particle here and it's got a velocity V. And of course, because it's traveling along a streamline, that velocity v is in the direction of the streamline. Um, so coming over to the little figure on the right now, we've got our fluid particle. It's traveling along this particular streamline. Um, it's got a streamwise direction along the streamline, and it's got a normal to the streamline component. So you can describe its position, its velocity, et cetera, in terms of these two orthogonal components. S describes the streamline, and then the off streamline is described by N. All right, so for a two-dimensional two flow, or acceleration can be written like this in terms of the streamwise direction and normal direction, and then using the chain rule, we can write the streamwise component of the acceleration as dv dt, where again, v is the particle velocity, right? I should write over here that v, the particle velocity by definition is ds dt, right? It's traveling along s, so it's ds dt is our velocity. So, um, the acceleration in the streamwise component is dv dt using the chain rule that's dv dt times ds, or pardon me, that's d v ds times ds dt. Um, but as we've just talked about, dv
uh, ds dt is just v, the particle's velocity. So we can rewrite this as dv ds times v. Okay, so that's the particle's acceleration along the streamline. I'll just rewrite that at the top of this page here. Uh, and then the normal component of the acceleration Just label this streamwise component of particle acceleration. And then the normal component is just the centrifugal acceleration. So A sub n is just the velocity squared over the radius of curvature. Right, um, and I wanna point something out. If we look at these examples of streamlines on the sides and the margins here, we can see a few patterns. So first, let me tell you, we'll get into this more in chapter four, but for incompressible flow, uh, the velocity is inversely proportional to the streamline spacing. So let's look at these examples in the margins, starting at the top left here. If we have a series of streamlines that are parallel and equidistant, then we know that the accelerations, both components of the acceleration are zero. If we have a series of streamlines that are getting closer and closer together, we know we have a positive acceleration in the streamline direction. If we have conversely streamlines that are getting farther apart as the particle moves to the right, then we know we have a negative acceleration in the streamwise direction. Moving over to the other side, if we have curvature in our streamlines, but again, the streamlines are equidistant in the radial direction, then we know um, that we have positive acceleration in the normal direction. And then finally on the bottom right, if we have curvature plus streamlines getting closer together, we know we have positive um, accelerations in both components. So positive streamlines and positive normal to streamline acceleration components. All right, let's go ahead and look at a streamline. Consider a fluid particle traveling along the streamline. So here we've got our particle. It's, uh, we're writing it as a box shape right now. Um, and we've got that red streamline. So the particles traveling along that streamline. We've got the S direction along the streamline and the N direction normal to the streamline. This particle has a width DS or delta S along the streamline. It's got a height delta N in the N direction and then it's got a width delta Y into the page. Um, we've got gravity acting on it. Um, in principle, we have shear stresses, but because we're assuming that everything's in viscid, we're ignoring these in our force balance. But we do have pressure forces acting on each face. And then uh, the streamline is oriented right here um, at an angle theta with the horizontal. I think that covers everything. All right, so if we consider a small fluid particle, Um, of size delta S by delta N by delta Y into the page. 
uh, and we want to sum the forces on the particle along the streamline. So we know we've got um, our Newton's second law here, right? Got the sum of the forces in the streamwise direction is equal to the mass of the particle times the acceleration in the streamwise direction. Um, we can write this as delta m v dv ds, as we talked about a couple slides ago, is equal to rho d. Now remember, v with a slash through is volume. v dv ds. Can I see? Oh, I'm recording a lecture right now. I know this. Can I try it? Oh, no, right now, sweetheart. Go Can hang with dad. One? Go hang with dad. All right. And this is equation 3.2. All right. Now, the component of the weight force along the streamline, because the streamline is an, at an angle theta, is the following. minus gamma delta volume V del V del S. Okay. Um, and then we have to consider the pressure force. So as in chapter two, we approximate the pressure acting on each face. Remember the pressure is P at the center of the particle. And at the right end of the particle, it's P plus dPDS delta S over two. At the left end, it's P minus dPDS delta um, S over two. 